What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today I'm going to be showing you how to accomplish some infinite scrolling with Swift UI. And that's like when you're able to scroll and it keeps going and it just keeps loading more content. That's what we're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. And as you can see, uh, nothing too crazy going on in the project. We have our typical start off Swift UI um, project right here with our content view, the text saying hello world. I did add two files though. I have my animal file, which is the type of object I'm going to be displaying on the screen. And we have it conforming to identifiable and it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward with the properties right there. And then you can also see that I have this source of truth object. Now this object is going to be our observe our observable object. It's going to essentially be keeping the state of our animals. Once again, those are the things that we're going to be displaying to the screen. And this get animals function is supposed to kind of represent an API call. So generally you would have some type of API that's going to give you a chunk of data. And depending on which page or index that you pass to it, it's going to give you the data at that index. So as you can see here, we have get animals at index. And then when we pass in index zero, our first chunk is going to look like this. When we pass in index one, our second chunk is going to look like this. And that's all I did because, uh, you know, typing all this out by hand made me feel kind of stupid. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump back over to our content view. And let's start off by adding in a navigation view and a list into our body. So this is where we're going to be displaying our animals. Um, I haven't added anything in here yet. And actually, let's go ahead and add a navigation title just so it's a, a wee bit sexier. Yeah, just a wee bit. So we need to actually get our animals so that we can specify to, our, to the list that we want our list to display those objects. So first, what we need to do is we need to create an instance of our observed or observable object, which is our source of truth. Right. We need an instance of this source of truth object. And then we also need to call get animals inside of our initializer method of our content view. So let's go ahead and add those in now. So now we have the SOT, which is source of truth instance right there. It's an observed object. And then we have our get animals call right here inside of the initializer of the content view. And once again, just passing in that zero, getting that first chunk. Now let's go ahead and specify that our list is supposed to display the animals from our source of truth. So we have our animals being passed into our list now. And since um, animal does conform to identifiable, we can just pass it in simple like that. And then in this, uh, in this closure, we're obviously being passed an animal, in which case we're just passing it into the text so that we can see the emoji of the animal and the name of the animal. So let's go ahead and run that, make sure that everything works as expected. All right, and as you can see here, once our app has loaded, we can see that we have all the animals listed out right here. Now I'm going to add in like kind of like a little bit of a cheat just so that I can space out these uh, views. I want each view, each text view that's showing the, the emoji and the animal's name to be a little bit thicker just so that we can't see all of the animals in one shot. I want to make sure that pig and frog and maybe even cow are off the screen. So I'm going to just add some padding to this text view right here. So I added a, a padding operation right here on vertical. So that's going to be the top and the bottom and it's going to be 30 on the top and 30 on the bottom. And what that's going to do is, is it's going to actually um, make it so that we don't see all of the animals in one go. And the reason why I didn't want to show all of the animals in one go is because realistically, when you're getting this type of data, you're either going to get way more data than I'm, than I'm presenting right here which is going to essentially fill up your screen. So um, even if you didn't have extra padding, you probably wouldn't be able to see all the way to the bottom. Oh, that's interesting. Look at how polar bear ended up turning out. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so you wouldn't be able to see all the way to the bottom. And um, if you did only have like maybe 10 results or maybe 15 results, um, then it's more likely that your data is going to be very uh, large and you're going to be displaying more things kind of like Instagram. So a dog would take up like maybe like almost half the entire screen. A cat would take up another half of the screen. So you would continue to scroll. So 
I just wanted to explain that part why I'm, I'm cheating a little bit to get them off the screen, but um, we're gonna actually continue on to the infinite scrolling part now. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that when we get towards the bottom, we want to load the, the next index. So we wanna load index one, right? So what we can do is we can create a, a state property that will hold the index that we're supposed to load next. So as you can see here, I have an at state uh, property wrapper on this next index, and this is going to essentially keep track of which page or index we should be loading from the API. Now, the, what I need to do is I need to make sure that I'm calling uh, get animals, and I want to pass in the next index when I see you know one of these last rows inside of the inside of the list. So I want to be able to start off at the top and then when I scroll down to the bottom, I want to continue to scroll so that we can actually see the next index, right? So it should be seamless. We should be able to keep scrolling without even noticing that a load took place, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn this into instead of a list of animals, I'm going to actually do it a list of indices. So the each index of the animal I'm going to have access to that and when we get to the second to last index when this pig is going to appear we want to load the next one so that by the time that the frog comes on to screen they can keep scrolling and it'll be smoother now you could do it maybe third to last or something like that you could even do it the last one but um, I'm going to just go with second to last All right, so as you can see, now what we're doing is we have our list and instead of passing in the animals themselves, we're passing in the indices of that array and we're going to actually be using the ID as the, the specific index itself. Then we're gonna pass in individual indexes in this closure right here, it, which is going to allow us to still get the animal by using the, the subscript um, animal index on the animals array then everything else is just pretty much the same. The only thing that we changed here is the on appear method. So whenever one of these text views appears, what's going to happen is this block of a code is going to be called. And if that animal index is equal to the second to last index of the entire array, then we're going to run this block of code right here, which is essentially to get the animals at the next index. And then we also need to make sure that we're going to imp increment the next index so that we can get um, whatever's whatever comes next, obviously. So let's go ahead and run that and let's see if it works. All right, so as you can see here, we have our list. And if you notice the scrolling, what happens is it looks like it already actually loaded some more. So as you can see, it already loaded our second index, which is kind of good. It, it did exactly what we wanted. And one thing that I want to point out to you is that over here, when we're getting our animals, we need to specify when we're actually um, calling uh, get animals. So let's go ahead and add a print statement that says um, getting, and then we'll just uh, specify the index, getting index. So let's go ahead and run this one more time just so that we can see what's happening. All right, so as you can see here, we're getting zero and we're getting one immediately, which is not what we want actually. And the reason we don't want that is because we don't want to load data into memory if the user's not even gonna scroll this far, right? Like it doesn't make sense to show this data if the user won't scroll that far. So the reason why this is happening is because when a list is being rendered out, it actually starts off very small for a millisecond and all of the rows inside of it, all the, the text inside of it are technically being um, displayed or, or, or calling on a peer. That means that when it's super small, what's happening is our second to last, which is our pig, our pig, or, yeah, it's our pig, is actually appearing and it's triggering the next index to essentially be called. So now what's happening is this is being called at the same time and it's it's making our load, um, it's making us load data that the user may not even want to access yet. So in order to fix this, what we're going to do is instead of using a list, we're gonna actually be using a lazy 
uh, V stack. And the reason we're going to be using a lazy V stack is because the lazy V stack makes it so that it's not going to essentially render out the view until the user is about to actually see it, which is going to preserve the resources um, of our app. So let's go ahead and change this list to a lazy V stack. And the way that we're actually going to handle this properly is to wrap that lazy V stack in a scroll view. And we're also going to have to use a, a, a for each as well. So let's, Let's make those changes now. All right, so as you can see, we have replaced the list with a scroll view, a list V stack, and a for each. So the scroll view obviously gives you scroll functionality. Um, the lazy V stack allows us to um, displace uh, each of our views vertically and make sure that we are not going to be using resources or rendering views that are not going to be presented to the user quite yet. And then the for each to loop through each of our indices of our animal array and then pass in the animal index and do all the greatness that we did before. So let's go ahead and run that and let's see if it works as expected. All right, so yeah, I mean, we have a, a formatting issue, but that's not what we're concerned about. Now, when, when I scroll, you can see that the, the scroll bar is kind of showing that there's only one index loaded. We also only have getting zero right here. So that's already a sign that we are doing things properly. And then when we scroll down, we can see that we got one and that we're able to continue to scroll. And then when we get to the second to last of the, the second index, then it's obviously going to try to load more, but I don't have anything else in there, so nothing's gonna be loaded. So let's go ahead and run that one more time, make sure that it is working as expected. And when we scroll, we get pretty much smooth scrolling all the way down to the 30th in um, the 30th index, which is the bug. So that's all I have for today. I'm not going to format all this stuff. It, it's concepts, not actually implement this thing. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you learned something new. If there are any other topics that you want covered, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.